Right, good afternoon. Uh, so, yeah, still um, can't ride my bike. Three weeks this Thursday since I broke it. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that um, I've got about two weeks till the end of May. So, still hoping to get that 12th ride in for my rando around the uh, touch and go, though, to be honest with you. It's not feeling great. But anyway, anyway, because I can't ride or do anything like that, I thought I'd do a quick video. Um, about riding calendar events now they're back up and running um, I've done a load of um, 200s so very specifically this is about riding 200 kilometer um, events uh, as a calendar ride so I've got nine tips uh, I'm going to start them now so tip one get to the front um, so if you get to a an event where you want to be at the start of that event is, you know, your first one. Don't be a shrinking violet and go to the back. What you want to do is get to the front, get out of the hall or whatever it's been held in the village hall and go down to the front where they're going to set you off from and basically be the first bike or at least win the first few bikes that go out. You want to do this because what will happen is, um, you know, you'll get your first lot that will shoot off. Yeah, ignore them. They're too fast. They're always too fast. <laughs> Let them go. Uh, but the next lot, you might be, okay, these are a good pace, you know, you can ride with these. If they're too fast, you can filter back, filter back, filter back, till you find a group that you're comfortable riding with. Um, and that's what I've done in any Ordax, really, just, just filter back, um, and you'll find your level. If you start at the back and you sit back, then you're always playing catch-up, and obviously because you're trying to pace yourself, that's not a great thing. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is learn to group ride. Um, on calendar events, part of it is being sociable. So you want to learn actually how to ride in a group. Um, and that means, you know, you can get this kind of training if you go to your local bike club. Some of them um, do sort of Saturday morning, you know, 30 mile runs where you'll have a ride, you know, a road captain who'll teach you all the, the various signs and pointing out holes and all the bits that go along with riding the group. It is worth doing. Um, the discipline that you find from that and the, the sort of uh, the way you ride is pretty universal. And if you're not used to riding in a group, um, then, yeah, you need to do that. And you need to learn about trusting people's wheels and how to behave if you're at the front and how to take your turn. So that's a really good tip. Tip number two, learn how to how to um, learn how to uh, group ride. Tip number three, really simple one. Do your research. Um, Weather. Weather is a big part of Audax riding. So there's two reasons you want to research your weather. Number one, it's about the kit you take. Um, there is no point in taking um, a load of wet weather gear, fitting your mud guards, if it's going to be beautiful sun all day. You just don't need to do that. And you can actually, you know, chop a lot of your kit out. Um, and I'm talking 200s here, obviously, you know, so you, you'll have a fair idea about what the weather forecast is. Secondly, um, you want to know what your wind's going to do. And this is a really important point for, for two reasons, really. Again, um, if you've got a tailwind for the first half of your Rodex and you're always going to do a circular loop on a calendar event, um, you can go too hard. So you can think, hey, man, I'm feeling great today. Let's just let's just fly. Let's go. Uh, only to turn around at the halfway point, 100k in, and then find you've got an absolute killer headwind and you've burnt yourself, you know, rushing out at 35k an hour the whole way to your, your sort of turning checkpoint and then crawling back. Um, and likewise, the same, you know, you can get really paranoid about how much time it's taking you if you're riding into a headwind um, and trying to force the issue when actually you're going to have a really good tailwind in the afternoon. So, yeah, do, do you research where there's a big point and it'll, 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 um, It'll uh, dictate a lot of what you need to do on, on the actual ride itself. Tip number four. Um, ride to your next checkpoint. Split the ride up. That's the tip. Split the ride up. So um, when you step, set off, you not don't start thinking, I've got 200k to ride because that's quite hard. Um, what you want to do is think, where's my first checkpoint? 30k, 40k, 50k, and ride to that. So if you've got a 50k ride, you might say, well, I'll tell you what, we'll do 25k. That's halfway to the checkpoint. We'll have a breather, you know, stop for the loo, whatever, and then we'll do that. Um, so, yeah, just ride your checkpoints. Don't start counting down the whole ride, because if you, if you do that, um, it becomes a bit overwhelming. And if you've got a particularly big section, like some of the um, ones I've seen, once you go out, they don't really carry, come back. You can have almost 100k of... Um, you know, no checkpoint. Um, 
find somewhere on the map and think, yeah, we're going to ride to there and that's, you know, 40k away and break that down. Think in time, don't think in distance is another little tip I've been told. And it, that really works. So, um, you know, 40k, you know, is two hours. That's that's the way you want to think about it, really. If you ride at, say, 20k an hour, which is about average. So that's two hours. So if it's three o'clock, you know you're going to be there by five. And in your head, um, that seems easier. I don't know why, but riding to time rather than distance um, is definitely a tip that I've been told, and, and that seems to work for me. Tip uh, number five is um, not all the Audaxes are created equal, and that's an important um, point. Um, when you choose which Audax you're going to ride, make sure um, if it's your first one, I try and avoid any AAA scored calendar events. Um, go for less hilly ones. Get the distance. Once you can do 200k, then I'd start looking at hilly ones. Um, but yeah, do be very wary of um, hills on Audaxes and 200s. They're what sap you, really. They're what sap you. Distance to me is, you, you know, you, you can cover distance, but but the hills are what, what sting. So the flatter the better if it's your first. That'd be my tip. Tip number six is, um, it's not really a tip. It's more of a, you know, a thing to think about, I guess. So um, why are you riding an Audax? Why are you doing 200k? Um what I'm trying to say is, uh, start again. <laughs> Tip number six. So, um, enjoy it. I know that might sound a really strange tip, but stop. Take the photographs. Um, you know, sit down on the bench and have your sandwiches. Enjoy the view. Uh, you know, if you get to that point, don't worry too much about time. You know, obviously, you know, you've got to do it within the time, but. But don't be afraid to actually remember why you're doing it. It's to get out and see the countryside, see these beautiful parts of the world, you know, and and actually enjoy it. If you're just doing it with your head down to smash it, well, that's fine. I'm not criticising that. There's plenty of people that do all axes just for the personal challenge. But for me, it's a little bit about, you know, enjoying the, the day out really on the bike and the scenery and seeing what we see, you know, on our bikes and stopping and taking a picture and, you know, um, doing that sort of thing is, is kind of why I do it. So... Factor that in, you know, factor in your stops. It's, it's not, you know, not the end of the world. You listen to Mark Bowman and he says, you know, you've got to ride four hour sets and don't stop and do everything you can on the bike. And that's fine if you're an endurance rider and I get that. But, you know, we're, we're not, we're, well, we are sort of, but we're, you know, you're kind of doing it for the for the love of it, really. Um, so don't forget to, to take the pictures and enjoy it while you're out there. Seven, tip seven. So um, this one is um, a real simple one, right? It's hard. <laughs> It'll hurt. There'll be bits where you suffer, but they come and they go. Um, so I think one of the things, the tip I'd give anyone who's doing a 200, um, just be prepared for that. You are going to have a bit of time where you're going to be like, this is quite hard now. It could be at 200k, it could be at 50k, it could be 150k, it could be the last 10k, or whatever. You are going to get a point where um, you feel a bit... Uh, I think it comes with experience. My first Audax, well, one of my first Audax was a really hilly 100 and I bailed. I don't think I'd have bailed that Audax now. I think I just, I got to a point where I was like, oh, I'm not enjoying this. Let's get a train. And that's what I did. I think now I'd have just, I realised that if I'd have just stopped, if I'd have had something to eat, if I'd have just had a bit of a drink, had a bit of a break, I had loads of time in hand, you know, I, I could have pretty much walked home, to be honest. But I just, you know, I wasn't loving it at that point, and um, that happens in Audax. You know, you, you you have lows. So just be prepared for that, and just have a good word with yourself, and you know, just say, yeah, okay, it's not all gliding between hedgerows for, you know, twelve hours. There will be bits where you just get a bit, Ugh. but they come and they go, and then ten minutes later, you'll be having a great time. Trust me. Tip number eight. Um, this is about uh, Audax in general, really, and it's about the kit for your first Audax. Um, there's no wrong kit really in Audax. I mean, um, the bike can be anything, whatever's comfortable really, but comfort over speed is something I've discovered, I guess. Um, you know, a lot of bikes that you see out there, um, the sort of carbon race bikes, um, aren't the best for Audax in my opinion. They might work for you. Likewise, I think a lot of the gravel bikes that people are buying as sort of do-it-all bikes, they're not really great for Audaxing either, you know, uh, from my view. 
but that's just me you know it's personal i i've got what i got um, and it and it works but don't be afraid to get the granny gears don't be afraid to go big on the cassettes don't be afraid to tinker and change and and, and basically adapt the bike to be as comfortable as it can for you um, you know you'll see a lot of brook saddles there's a reason for that you'll see a lot of steel frames when you do with audex there's a reason for that um so yeah just just don't be um what's the tip really i'm saying don't be sucked into sort of the commercial side of bike riding because audax is a bit niche what actually works for audax in sometimes isn't what the perceived wisdom is you know if that makes sense if that makes sense it probably doesn't I'll, oh, i don't know it, it does to me just just choose what works for you you know <laughs> this is my last tip and it's um number nine number nine I managed to count to nine which is a good start but this actually is a really serious tip and uh you you'll know what i mean when you get out there so never 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 judge an audaxer by their cover never judge your randonneur by what they look like um you will meet all shapes and sizes um out there on your rides and you cannot judge how good somebody is at riding audax from what they look like the kit they're riding anything you will meet 78 year olds who will kill you on a climb <laughs> you will meet uh you know all sorts of people that you would think well you know they're going to struggle a bit oh no they'll kill you don't worry they'll they'll be much better than you they'll be seasoned wizened old audaxes that you won't have a hell and hoping hell of keeping up with and you know you just can't tell you just can't tell at all you just cannot tell how good at audax riding somebody is from looking at them. so don't try don't judge people is what i'm saying that's a good tip to end on it don't judge people um so yeah so i'm i'm fairly miserable as you can probably tell um this is about the best i can do for a youtube video at the moment um but yeah you know when we get back out i've got the 300 books my first 300 that's coming up in june i'm determined to ride that um so yeah if you like that and you want to see about that ride i'm doing it with my mate dom it should be quite good fun actually I'm, I'm looking forward to it it'll be a bit of a laugh so uh yeah obviously subscribe and uh yeah be back on the bike soon bye bye